Hi, welcome to this video. So we're going to be talking about Kuro games and how they're changing the gotcha space, how I feel like Wuthering Waves is actually a perfect game to study and why other games should be doing these certain things to be a successful game. And yeah, we'll go through it. So I'll be doing another video just like this for Snowbreak because I believe Snowbreak does the same thing. So look out for that. Anyways, we're going to be going on Wuthering Waves. So we're going to be talking about gotcha systems, combat, grinding systems, quality of life, and reward systems. I think they do exceptional in these things, and I think this is why they're actually kind of surviving throughout, like, their criticism. No doubt, they have a lot of things wrong with their game, and only things that are actually just only good, or things that need- that are subpar to other games that they need to improve on, but I believe these few things that needs to be said. So, let's go over gotcha systems. So, gotcha systems, the most important thing about a gotcha game, right? Because that's all that, that is endgame, right? You, you kind of just pull and you get the character and woo, you get to build another character. Yay! <laughs> Very funny. So, gotcha system. It's essential to a gotcha game. It is pretty much how the companies earn their money. It is through the gotcha system. It is pretty much the only way that most games earn their money. Now, the gotcha system in Kuro, I wouldn't say is my ideal, but I think it's in the right direction. Obviously, this is probably the weakest point out of this whole video, though having 100% on weapon pools is going to save you a lot of pools, and also doing 10 less pools than any other gacha game, which is 80 pools on their resonator slash characters, is also a significant jump. You're going to be saving like at least 10 pools. Or 20 if you reach a hard pity of 50-50 if you're unlucky. Sounds like a skill issue, but whatever. So, yeah, no, actually, like, more of a serious note. The system in this game is a lot better just because, the well, the less pulls you use, the more pulls you get for the next character, or the more pulls you get for a dupe. I don't care how you play this game in terms of, like, if you want to pay money or not. Though, should be said that this will make it a lot easier to get things that you want, and get things that you need for the future as well. So let's just say if you want a Jinsa, and then you want a whatever the next uh, buffer is called, I don't actually remember for next patch, then yeah, you can get them easier, way easier. Or if you want a Jinsa and Changli like I did, I totally fluked my luck, 100%, because I got Changli and Jinsa to S3, and no money really well uh, that's a lie there's there was battle pass and the, the everyday thing but still like that definitely helped 100 percent i'm sure it helped not because i was lucky anyways let's keep going to the next section combat the most vital thing about wuthering waves the thing that it just advertised itself about it's gonna be the best combat in the gacha space and i think it done really really well so, do you remember the tutorial when you like kind of jumped and then you wall climbed and shit? You're like, oh my god, you wall climbed in this game, what the hell? And then you jump down and then you're like, oh shit, this boss. Oh, oh shit. Did you die? Did you have fun? Or did you just clear it with ease? Either way, I think that boss fight completely set the field of what a combat based game should be. And that is not even the hardest fight. And I hope that's not the hardest fight, anyways, or this game will suck. So, what do I look in the combat-based system? Now, the first thing I'm going to explain is fluidity. So, fluidity of a game. Now, what I mean about this is how free a character is. When you do an input, it does the input. Wow, how uh, magical is that? But it's actually really, really important when you do a dodge or when you do an attack it does it almost straight away. There are some things that does, like, feel clunky. Now, the difference between clunky and actual, like, animation locks would be you if you try to do something in the middle of something else that is important towards your damage and it's locking you and it specifically says it locks you, that is fine. Now, if there's an animation that locks your camera or keeps your character still and do nothing like Verena freaking going intro in, that's what I call clunk. It's shit, you can't do anything, it feels bad. Now obviously, I'm overreacting about Verena's thing, but that is like the thing that feels clunky. When you intro into 
a character and you can't do anything except maybe just dodge but you feel like you're stuck now this game doesn't have that outside of rain this game doesn't feel like you're stuck at any point in time there are animation cancels there are situations where you shouldn't be doing skills that you will get stuck in you will know those skills eventually and yeah the only other thing that criticism that i can do is actually this game should be 120 fps and that'll help with fluidity a lot it'll feel a lot better in terms of the motions of the game but yeah no fluidity is not a thing that i can articulate that well but once you like play one game to another once you play a clunkier game or an older fighting game or an older action based game and you feel those locks you feel those like hindrances and you play like a game like uh grand blue fantasy or wuthering waves or even elden ring you can feel the your keys you can feel like your character you're controlling your character if that makes sense so i'll, I'll I'm, I'm i'm done with that but there are other systems in this game that makes it feel a lot better as well so the perfect dodge system so if you do a perfect dodge like implied then you do get an iframe for a little bit and you the attack of that dodge will actually also get an iframe as well and then there's a parry system so when the enemy lights up yellow the yellow circle thing and then you do a parry it stops their attack and you have full force attack because he has he has downtime and you just go in now while we're going on that we're gonna go on the challenge mechanics so the bosses bosses in themselves are really really even the elites are really really cool in terms of you have to look out at what they're fucking doing or you are going to die even in the overworld you will die in the hologram you will get two shot in the overworld you will get four shot or five shot or whatever you will die very easily in this game in this game is very easy to accidentally be like oh i i screwed up and died this game i would explain that most other action combat games are combo based on your characters and these games like elden ring or grand blue fancy or wuthering waves are are combo based depending on the boss what i mean about that is you are always looking at the boss what they're doing or the mobs or the elite or whatever what they're doing and you're going to combo based on their downtimes now the other games where i mean like character combo based you just keep rotating and rotating and rotating and rotating and rotating keep doing your animation cancel keep not fucking up do everything as fast as possible the max dps as possible blah blah blah, blah. that's fun but what's more fun is actually going with the motions through the bosses and outplaying the mechanics that the developers set on you. The holograms actually do a really, really good job of that, showing skill expression. And obviously not everyone can do it. There are going to be some people that won't be able to do it because, well, you will need more experience. You would need more skill, which kind of sucks. It, yeah. But there are obviously other got uh gotcha. Obviously other systems in this game, like the recent two events where there were combat events. You pretty much just had to go through it, get as many points as possible, do as much DPS as possible, kill all the enemies. That is the more character combo base, and I think that's also really, really good for this game anyways, because that's quite a bit easier to do. Obviously, the higher skilled players on that will do significantly better. But it's not that hard to do to go with the motions being like, hey, this I'm gonna supposed to do this here, this here, this here, this here, so on and so forth. Hey, I do DPS, hell yeah. So this game, all in all, this game's combat does really, really well at showing skill expression and experience as well. Not only skill expression, but experience with the bosses. You are going to die against holograms many, 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 many times before you're able to complete it. Especially with the harder ones, especially if you're fighting ones that you're under leveled at. You are going to die. But with each death, you will have an experience of like, how did I die? And you will keep going and persevere. So I'll be going to my next topic. So their echo system. What is an echo? An echo is basically a thing that drops when you kill a mob. What does it do? So, each echo has a main stat and substats. So pretty much you would need to grind this to get gear. This is the gearing system of Wuthering Waves. Kudo has done an amazing job to actually make a way where you can grind stuff without stamina. 
and it actually affects your game. Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a more net positive than a net negative. Obviously, this means more grinding for the player. If they don't really want to grind, well, tough luck. Though, there is actually a way to not grind, kind of. And that's actually to do events. So, Echoes are actually rewarded through events as well. You can choose main stats as much as you want, as much as it allows you. And the only problem is, well, if your subsets are shit, then... Oh well, that kind of sucks. But here's the solution. Just grind more, ha! Huh? Uh, yeah, uh, the grinding system in this game is quite a lot, but the fact that it doesn't cost stamina doesn't make you feel uh, as bad as, as stamina games where it's like, oh, well, it's over. I can't really do much now. That sucks. Anyways, I'll explain how the ecosystem works. So, ecosystem, there are four costs, three costs, one cost. Each cost pretty much gives a different main stat. So, four costs will do crit, crit damage, attack, defense, healing bonus, and I believe... Nope, that is it. And three costs will give you energy, any type of elemental damage increase, attack, defense, HP. Oh, that's what I forgot for the four costs. Does HP as well. And the one cost is just attack, defense, and HP. Now, each of these have actually also a stat below it, which is normally attack or HP, and that never, doesn't ever change, so don't worry about that. Now, to grind, how to like level it up, it's still through stamina, unfortunately, though when you do reuse an echo that you think is bad, it does use 70% of the exp which is not too bad it's all right though let me press this again i think more games should be looking at what can the player do without stamina i think the ecosystem is proved perfectly in how players can actually do stuff without stamina and complements really really well with the combat of their game because well how you get them is through combat and most events also have combat within it so yeah I think, again, this system is amazing. There's actually one thing I forgot to add, and it's pretty much like about the ecosystem itself, so whoops. Anyways, there, like I mentioned before, there's four, three, and one cost. So all the four costs uh, have a pity of 15 times per week to be guaranteed, and then after that is two times. So I'm gonna post a picture here where you can find like how many times you have left. Three cost actually has a pity of four, and unfortunately it's the hardest one to grind for just because it has the most variety, so that's each element, right? So that's there's that, and it still has the attack, energy regen as well, and then defense and HP, which does kind of suck, but it is what it is, and yeah, you do get some guaranteed main stats in some events, which is really, really important, but sometimes the subsets aren't the ones that you need, but can definitely get you started. Now, the one costs are really easy, they have a pity of 8, and you don't really ever get to the pity anyway, so you probably won't even notice the pity anyway. So yeah. Now there's one last thing I'd like to add, and there is actually a way to increase your echo... Uh, drop rate and that is through a food that I'll put also on the screen This food is actually kind of expensive uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you don't have money. That's all I'll say now I think that wraps it up and hopefully I'll go to the next section now and not add anything else <laughs> So Before I wrap the video up we need to talk about quality of life and reward systems both systems are really, really important. I believe quality of life is actually the most important thing, not the gameplay loop, not anything else in this game. The quality of life is probably the most important thing because once a player is hooked, they need to feel like they're listened to. They need to feel like they're rewarded. They need to feel like they're compensated for things, so on and so forth. You get what I mean. Now, Kuro has done this exceptionally well. They had such a shit launch, I'll say that. They had such a terrible launch. But you know what made it better? It's all the Apollo Gems, 5 star, and everything like that. Now that isn't part of quality of life, that doesn't even go under reward systems, but that goes under how the development team is like, hey, we really want you to stay, we are gonna fix these screw-ups, and they did it. Every single screw-up, no, okay, not every single, most of the screw-ups have been fixed. When they did that JP one, oh my god, that was terrible. But did they fix it? Yes. Did they compensate? Yes. Now, 
when a development team listens, it makes people want to stay. Especially if they like the game. If they like the game and the development team doesn't listen, sometimes they'll leave for a different game that's similar. Or a different game in total. Just because, hey, there's so many problems with this game, fuck this game. But no, Wuthering has done, or Wuthering, Kuro has done very, very well with this game. I believe that they can pretty much just do so much quality of life in this game in terms of right now they did the ecosystem where bank level 21 they did cutting cost of echoes for upgrading them and next patch they're actually giving us a free five star which is part of more of the reward bit of it if each player feels special within the game or if the community feels like they're getting acknowledged or rewarded they'll stay the quality of life is so so important to be able to play the game the reward system is so so important to stay in the game they go so hand in hand together and i think kuro has done a wonderful job the takeaway from this to other games is should be the development team should acknowledge and listen and act accordingly to what is the criticisms or suggestions towards the game it's super super important i believe and this game's done very well. Now, again, game's not perfect, but I believe when there's 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, there's gonna be so many different things that they're gonna do, it's gonna be insane. And I'll be so, 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 so happy when they give me 120 FPS, please. So, to wrap up my video, what did I talk about? What did I think Kuro did amazing on? They did their gacha systems, which I feel like is the weakest point, but I think they did really, really well. Their combat, which is what they're focused on in this game, and it's fucking phenomenal. Now, their grinding system, which I believe should be in every other game. I believe there should be some way of doing non-stamina stuff while improving your account majorly. Quality of life and reward systems, the quality of life of this game is really, really good. I'm really looking forward to what 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 has to have in the near future. And obviously the reward systems in terms of compensation or well, compensation, Apollo gems, and actual like login rewards, and also event rewards, which I didn't really actually get over. I hope this game does well. These are the things that I want to see in every other gacha game, and I think these are essential maybe not the combat the combat not too much the if anything any of one of these things that i want them i want any other game to have is this the quality of life so 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 important but i'm not gonna keep going so if you like this video please like and subscribe i will put out a snow break video i will do a criticism for uh what as well because i think there are plenty of things that are wrong with this game as well now Again, this is a really hard video. Had a lot of fun. But hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Bye.